BMR calculators can help you find your calorie intake for weight loss or muscle gain, but some have limitations that could lead you down the wrong path. So if you're stuck in your fitness journey and want better results from your diet, stick around for the most accurate way to calculate your BMR. Base metabolic rate, or BMR, is the number of calories your body burns daily, excluding activity and exercise. Think of it as the minimum energy required to keep the lights on. Surprisingly, your metabolism typically burns 60 to 80% of your daily calories, but everybody's metabolic rate differs depending on your body size, gender, and genetics. Understanding BMR is vital to determining the number of calories to eat for a diet that's uniquely tailored to your metabolic rate. The easiest way to calculate BMR is using an estimation formula. You can do the calculations by hand or use an online calculator to do the math. One option is the Mifflin St. Gior equation. It estimates BMR using gender, height, weight, and age. This one is the easiest to use, but it's usually the least accurate. Another option is the Catch McArdle equation, which is based on your weight and body fat percentage. It then uses your lean body mass to estimate BMR. In most cases, the Catch McArdle equation is more accurate because muscle mass strongly correlates with metabolic rate. The caveat is that you need a reasonable estimate of your body fat percentage. Unfortunately, neither of these equations accounts for genetic variability in metabolic rate. In other words, BMR calculators don't work if your metabolism is faster or slower than average. To address this issue, I created a new BMR formula that adjusts for individual metabolic differences. Let me show you how it works. Traditional BMR calculators can overestimate or underestimate how many calories you burn. The reason is that the equations assume everyone fits on the same linear trend line. So if you fall outside of the predictive model, the calorie intake recommendations are inaccurate, which could lead to a lack of results when dieting. To illustrate this problem, let's look at an example. Sarah is a 25-year-old woman weighing 170 pounds and 5 feet 4 inches tall. With these inputs, a BMR calculator using the mifflin St. Gior equation estimates her BMR to be about 1,500 calories. Now let's add that she has 40% body fat. Using the catch McArdle equation, her estimated BMR is significantly lower at 1,369 calories. In this case, the catch McArdle equation is more accurate because she has less lean mass than the average person. If Sarah used the mifflin St. Gior equation, she'd have a harder time losing weight. This example illustrates the importance of body composition. However, studies show that differences in lean mass can't explain 27% of BMR variation. That means the remaining deviation must be due to other genetic factors. In another video, I defined metabolic types as a spectrum from slow to fast metabolism. Applying this concept to BMR calculations allows me to expand the model to a broader range of people. Returning to our example, let's say Sarah is an endomorph who's always struggled to lose weight. Adjusting for a naturally slow metabolism, her BMR goes down to 1,219 calories. That's almost 300 calories less than most BMR calculators would show. And this precision could result in a calorie target that finally helps her lose weight. Now let's look at the other end of the spectrum, where most calculators underestimate BMR. This time, I'll use myself as an example. If I put my numbers in the Mifflin St. Gior equation, it says my BMR is 1691. But the Catch McArdle equation is higher at 1853. Again, the KM equation is closer to reality because I have slightly more lean mass than the average person. And if I used the MSJ equation, I'd probably lose muscle. On top of that, I have a relatively fast metabolism and other traits associated with an ectomeso metabolic type. When I plug that in, my true BMR is 1,927 calories. That's about 240 calories higher than the MSJ equation. And maintaining or gaining muscle is much easier if I use this BMR to find my calorie intake. You can download this spreadsheet and input your own numbers to compare BMR equations. This can be a game changer in determining your actual BMR and ideal calorie intake. It's important to understand that BMR is different from your target calorie intake. To find out how many calories you should eat, we first need to know your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE. This is all the calories you burn, including BMR, normal activities, and exercise. I covered the equations for calculating TDEE based on your BMR and activity level in another video, which you can refer to for more information. Understanding TDEE establishes your maintenance calorie intake. From there, you can reduce calories for weight loss or increase calories for muscle gain. To lose weight, you must create a calorie deficit by eating fewer calories than you burn. 
However, consistently eating at or below your BMR can result in excessive muscle loss, metabolic slowdown, and weight loss plateaus. Therefore, eating more than your BMR but less than your TDEE is generally best for weight loss. The cookie cutter recommendation is consuming 500 calories less than you burn. But a 500 calorie deficit could be too much for some and too little for others relative to how many calories you burn. So I recommend setting a calorie target as a percentage of your TDEE. Specifically, a 10 to 20% calorie deficit should result in weight loss with minimal muscle loss for most people. And if you want to lose weight faster, adding activity is often better than cutting calories. That way, you increase the deficit with less strain on your metabolism. On the other hand, gaining muscle requires creating a calorie surplus by eating more calories than you burn. I recommend starting with as little as a 5 to 10% calorie surplus for lean muscle gain. It's better to start with a conservative approach to avoid excess fat gain and other complications, and gradually increasing if you're not gaining weight. Ultimately, finding your BMR and calorie intake is an excellent first step. These calculations empower you to create a healthy meal plan to reach your fitness goals. If you need more help, click the link in the description to create your custom meal plan. You can also check out some of my other videos for more diet and exercise information.